Um, so I think what we will do is um, we'll just start out with um, with um, April. Why don't you come on up and uh, introduce yourself to us, tell us about your campaign, and uh, we'll take 15 minutes uh, for your talk and question and answer, and then we'll move on. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I'm April McIver. I am running for the Office of Register of Deeds for Lexington County. Most of the speaking engagements I've been to give me two minutes, so we can stretch this out a little bit. I'm not used to 15 minutes. You'll, you'll know more about me you than you have to. You <laughs> <laughs> what do they all say? Two minutes is good, but one is better. Um, but this does give me a little bit of an opportunity to do something that I have not been able to do before. And I'll tell you, I, you know, I'll tell you about the office. I'll tell you about why I'm qualified. But in that two minutes, I don't get to tell you about a little bit about me and about the obstacles I've faced and the things that I've overcome, which I think are important to all of this, especially with everything that's going on right now. I am one of the candidates that's kicked off the ballot. Um, if anybody wants my story very quickly, I'll tell you, I have my phone records, I have my email records. I was in constant contact with the Ethics Commission. Um, I was more worried about the contributions and expenditures, knowing that if I gave any information in a false manner that that was serious and I was very conscientious about every penny and accounting for everything. I went into the system over and over, saved my final call, had them check it, had them check it with me online. They went into it with me, you're good, you're good, just get that confirmation number. And anytime you order anything online, you get a confirmation number, you're good. If not, they kick you back usually and say, hey, something's missing. Um, so getting that confirmation number to me said that I did it right. I even went into my opponent, the incumbent's file, and compared it. I thought, what better way to make sure I'm doing it right than to look at the person that's been doing it for several years. Um, everything matched up. So, you know, it's, it's, I, I take full responsibility for my mistake. And that is something that I want everybody to know about. You know, they said something about the folks, the incumbents that file too late being fined. You know, I did it wrong, find me, but let me be on the ballot. But we can, that's a whole other speech we can get on to. But regardless, I plan on staying in. I feel like I have enough support, I've gone in enough support, I've got enough people that believe in me that I will do what it takes to get those 8,000 signatures. That's, that's my requirement, just under 8,000 but by July 16th, so that is my plan. Um, so to back up a little bit, the Register of Deeds, in case you don't know, is the office where all of your land transactions are maintained and made available to the public. They're recorded for, for public use. All your deeds, your mortgages, any tax liens you might have. Yeah, or not have. If you have tax liens, UCCs, things like that are all housed in the Register of Deeds office. Um, the records date back from the 1800s to current, so you can trace your property back as far as the 1800s depending on where you are and, and things go well. My job for the past 12 years as a title abstractor has been to do just that. I research those records for a living. So everything in that office, front to back, from the time you step off the elevator to the back of the room, I utilize every day. The company that I worked for for 12 years posted me in Lexington as their Lexington County abstractor 10 years ago. So I've been in this room pretty much from eight to five for 10 years. I know the employees, I know the attorneys, I know the surveyors, the realtors, the appraisers, all of the professionals that use this office. For about the past three to four years, I'd say, you know, we, we've all noticed the deterioration of the records. You can't help it. And, and I've got pictures, but, you know, pages come off in your hand and, and things are torn and they're ripped. This is how I make my living. And I don't know how many of you deal with attorneys on a regular basis, but when they want something, they want it right then. The liability that's involved in this is also huge. If I miss something, if I miss a mortgage, if I miss a lien, it comes back to me. My company is responsible for that amount of money if it's attached to that property. If there's a torn document, a torn record, a missing record, or it just takes me longer to find it out, all of this impedes the process and the records are deteriorated badly. Um, that was one of the first things that spurred me on is what can I do to fix this in listening to my friends and coworkers say, somebody's got to do something about this. Um, 
So that's what started it, and that's also where I feel like I'm the best candidate. I'm not a politician. I have learned more in the past four months than I ever, ever wanted to know. I vote, and, you know, and, and actually, it's been interesting. It really, to tell the truth, it makes me want to know more, actually, I'll, I'll be honest. But it also makes me glad that I'm an average citizen who wants to serve other people, and, uh, and, and I don't plan on changing that, you know, if elected and, and re-elected. You know, there'll be, the complacency won't be there. Um, and that's, I'll get to, a little bit of my personal history will lead into that. Um, I've had three jobs in 20 years, technically. I've always been the type that works two jobs. I'm kind of high strung, as they say, so I stay busy. Every job I've ever left, they've asked me to come back. I worked for Wachovia Bank for two years, sold a million and a half dollars worth of credit card accounts. They sent me on a trip to Cancun, all expenses paid. I said, well, you know, you need to promote me. And they said no, so I moved on. <laughs> um, I was trained for six weeks as an abstractor by my sister, who's a paralegal. And you know how sisters are. After six weeks, we were ready to not work together anymore. So I got a job with the company. I got a $12,000 raise in the first three months. In 90 days of having six weeks experience, he raised my salary by that much because of my abilities. I am educable, I catch on quick, and I don't stop learning. So those are some of the things about me. So, and in this company, when things went bad, he actually laid me off and did what he could to bring me back. When he laid me off, within two weeks, I bought my own errors and omissions insurance. I literally filled out paperwork, put it in a folder, and walked between Lexington and Richland County attorney's offices and garnered my own clients and billed out almost $70,000 for that first year. And then he asked me to come back, and I was tired, so I said, okay. So that's just a little bit about me. Um, Personally, that's some things that I've not been able to share with anybody. It's just the, the drive and determination that I was born with that I think is something that in an office like this, you have to work with county council on a budget. You manage a staff of between six to eight people. You know, you have to have a little bit of experience with adversity to be able to, to be effective. Um, and I know what it needs. I know that, that initially we're going to have to spend some money to fix things. But I also know that there's some pure elbow grease that can be put in there. And, and will make a difference. Um, so that brings me to some of the things that I'd like to see done. If any of you have any experience with the website, if you've ever gone on the Lexington County website, it's a good website. Um, the state has implemented these websites. So not, I don't want to get negative at all, but, but just to be so you're certain, it's not implemented by one person. This was something that, that every county did. Um, but it's incomplete. I think it's incomplete and I think it's unorganized and I use it every day to make a living and I listen to the people that use it every day. Um, again, there's money that might need to be spent, but if we can get all of these documents scanned and online in an organized fashion, there are no more hands touching them. There's no more, there's no more, they're preserved. And that is part of this job, is maintaining these records and preserving them forever and ever and ever because they're, they're it. It's, once they're gone, that's it. You, you, can't, you can't reproduce them. Um, so the online system, I think, can be improved. Uh, another thing is just the accountability that's been brought up lately with some of our elected officials. That office deals a lot with the public. I want to work with the public. I, I love talking to people. I love being with people. I want to be on the floor so that the employees can process the paperwork, get the work done. So many of these employees are dealing with the public, and you have folks that come up and say, my grandfather had this property in 1942, and I love you, and, and that's simply not their job. It's not what they're supposed to do. Um, I just want to be on the floor in an extra hand when I'm not actually doing administrative, you know, the, the other duties of the ROD. That's something that I look forward to is working with the public. Another uh, idea that I have is to also hold some forums. You know, there are people that, this website is out there. It's designed for you all to be able to use it from home. But who knows how, to, you know, I, I don't know how tech savvy you are, but it's not easy to navigate. It's just not. 
I would be willing to, on my own time, hold some quarterly forums so that people will familiarize themselves with the website. It will stop some phone calls. It will educate people. Um, I know the Brad Cunningham, the county attorney, fussed because he said, you know, we, we can't afford, I'm sorry, the town attorney, we can't afford a paralegal. So when I need a deed, I can go online and I can get them, but in 1998, they stop, and I have to drive up there and go get it and pay 50 cent a page. So there's an example right there of somebody spending time and money to go get something that could be made available to them with just, just some good, solid effort. Um, let's see. Yeah, 15 minutes is harder than I thought. Let's make sure we covered most of it. <coughs> Another thing that I could that I could tell you all about is is the employees. That's a hardworking group. Um, I have no, you know, I wonder. Nobody's ever brought this up to me, but this is something that I think about if I were you, listening to me say, "Well, she's been up there with those women, you know, with those people for 10 years. They're your, they're your friends. Can you manage them?" They run that office. They do such a great job. But I have no doubt in my mind that if I need to be, you know, if I need to make changes, I can make changes. But I can do it in, in such a way that everybody is involved. You know, it's not going to be like what you hear about with a lot of elected officials where you're just cut out. You know, you're cut out and they're in one office and you're in the other. So I, that's something I actually look forward to is working with these women as well. Um, that is about it for me, Talbert. Does okay. anybody have questions. any questions? A few minutes left for questions. Uh, yeah. You know how much the budget is for the register of deeds? I actually have it on paper. It is, I want to say, and I don't think it's very current. When I got it, I got it back in November when I first started this. And I'm going to, this is not, I would ask you not to quote me on this, but it is public record and it's around $16,000. And that's not salaries, that's office budget. But I do, I do actually have it. It is available. But do I know it right now? No, I'm sorry, I don't. What's your salary going to be? When I first looked at it, it was four years ago. It was 62, but I believe what she's reported now is 73, 72 and change. Wow. How do you get revenue into that? The uh, recording stamps. You have to pay to get things recorded. So there, it's, a, it's a, you know, like. So Ten dollars for a certain document. I'm sorry. Taxpayers are not funding. It's the users that fund. Oh, taxpayers absolutely. Well, taxpayers are paying the incumbent salary. Taxpayers pay the salary. There. Oh yes, taxpayer dollars run that office. Absolutely. But but they do generate revenue through the recording of the documents. Now there's copy money. You know, you pay your fifty cent a page. That goes straight back to the state, and you get. I want to say, as a matter of fact. You get 3%, I think, gets to stay there in the office. Um, and I think that's every three months that it's turned over. And you get to keep the 3%. But, um, but yeah, it is. It, so it, it generates <laughs> revenue for the county? It does, through the recording of the documents. But you said it goes to the state. That's, that's copy money. It, when you go up there and just get a copy, it's 50 cent a page. But if you mm -hmm. go up there and record a deed, a mortgage, and a plat, there are fees associated with those recordings. Those fees are what generate the revenue. The copy money is what shoots out of that office. It what doesn't goes stay. To the state? The, the copy money or no, ma'am. The copy money stamps? is yeah. The co yes, yes. The copy money is what shoots through that office. It, it's not held by that office. But it, the recording uh, fee that is goes what, to the state. No, that's what generates revenue for that office. Actually, that, that, that I can find out more about that. That's a good question. There's somebody that's running for that position last night at the GOP meeting. I heard about that. Said something about it. It was a huge amount of money. That's he's I, and I actually I talked to the incumbent today. She came up to me and told me what he said. She and, and what he was talking about was copy money. His suggestion was that because it's turned over that copy money, and she told me herself it's about a million dollars. We're talking about a million dollars every three months. That's and that's, crazy. Well, that's and that's what you know. I'll pay forty dollars in an hour for copies. I'm, I'm, I know you're there. Um, and his suggestion was why not turn it over to uh, Jim Ekstrom and gain interest, but you get to keep the three percent of it. So the interest, actually, what he said was false. It, it would be counterproductive. But he was talking about copy money. He wasn't talking about the rest of the, about the recording stamps and what you pay to record. 
she actually told me about that today when we were there. Yeah, I was going to say, why can't they reduce the copy fee so that it's reasonable and then keep all the funds here so it can pay for the office? You know, I'm sure, and, and when we went up to try, back in November when I went to try and investigate where the copy money went, that was one of my first questions. Does, where that does that it could go? pay for the salary? And but what that copy money else? does, I know at one point when they, when they implemented the online system a few years ago, there was a big, huge issue. When you go in there, there are computer terminals. Because, you know, there, there's 50 of me, you know, and, and we're the public, but we're in there every day. So we've got five computer terminals that we can sit down and search title with on a regular basis. At one point, when they switched over from an outside vendor to save money, an outside vendor that would maintain these computers in this system, uh, they switched to an in-house. There was some mishap about who actually owned the computers and they all went out the door. So they had to raise the copy cost to put computer terminals back in there so that we'd have something to use. So that's my only experience with, you know, as far as the, you know, raise, the reason the copy cost even went up several years ago was because, you know, I's weren't dotted, T's weren't crossed, and when they switched vendors to an in-house IT system, the computers went out the door and they had to figure out, she had to figure out a way to get it back. Why does the state have claim? <coughs> now, and I, I apologize that I don't know more about that. That is something, and I, that's why I have my pen in hand, is to take notes. You know, I, I don't, I honestly don't know. That is something that I need to find out about. And, I, and I can, and I can, uh, I can come back and, and answer anybody's question. I'll find out anything you want to know. I know one thing on this, the recording fees, the deed stamps. There's no sales tax whenever you buy a property. So sales tax goes to the state. They just call it a deed stamp or a recording fee. And that's something I should know. Thank you. <laughs> that, that clears it up a little bit. One more question, anybody? But I do hope you all will consider with everything that's going on, my goal now is to encourage people not to vote straight ticket. You've got some really <laughs> excellent candidates out there that are going to be running on a petition ballot. And, you know, when you talk to your friends and family, if they go in and vote straight Republican, vote straight Democrat, they're going to be missing out on a lot of choices. Of course, we don't know what's going to happen. You know, we're still hanging in there. But, um, but I do, I am a conservative. You know, I, I read the Republican creed. I agree with what it says. I have conservative values. But regardless, I, I, I feel passionate about this job, and, and I'm going to hang in there if it's, if it's June or November. So that's something I want to leave you all with is, uh, you know, any support, any questions you have, I have a website. It's voteaprilmcivor.com. You're welcome to contact me at any time. I'm going to investigate, which I think you kind of answered it, Jason, but I do want to dig into it more. Um, but do remember that, that with all this going on, we might be at a loss for some choice if we if we do the straight ticket thing. I just have a comment. <clears throat> oh, my cousin works up in that office, and uh, he about exploded when he saw video recording of Dan Gregory's. Um, oh, the, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. So anybody that would like um, his comments and whatever, because he explained his life, I don't understand, but he did say that a general consensus of the 10 abstractors at the county today is that this guy needs to be stopped immediately. That he really has no clue. Mm -hmm. This is, so this is, the, other, this is the other opponent that's, yeah, that actually like filed that. correctly and is going to be on the ballot. So if you want to give me your email, I would be glad to forward this on to you to make a lot more I'll, information. I, but yeah, yeah, he's, he's, he's about to explode. Thank you so much. Thank you.